any best practices in sort of how to specifically use the vulnerability scanning? No, sorry, license scanning. There are many, many great packages out there that mm. you could be missing out on, but one that you're not compliant with is very bad. There's a ton of packages out there. At the end of the day, what you need to have when you're dealing with uh, third-party created packages, you have to have human intelligence. You have to vet those packages. There's really no way around that. You you don't want to trust some third party organization to there. Well, first there are none. You know, there's no there is no company out there. And we thought about it. We don't want to be responsible for telling you which packages are acceptable for your organization. But at the end of the day, what you need to do is establish a long list of acceptable packages. Uh, in tools like NPM, this is a very, very arduous task because there are millions of packages. You aren't going to use them. You're going to use thousands. Um, and then in those packages, there are thousands of versions. Um, but I look at it this way. You know, if you look at the two extremes, your options are no packages at all and then figure out, you know, handle new code additions through however you do it with code reviews, whatever. Um, or you know, is it uh, completely unfettered access to any package in the world, including packages that install malicious code on servers that uh, do things like, you know, submit things that look like passwords that users typed into uh, servers in China. There's packages that exist like that. There's art and I see articles on this stuff all the time. So what you have to find is, yes, it is a pain to have that, you know, have that vetting and validation, but it's better than nothing at all. Uh, so I think that's that's important to note. <clears throat> as far as best practices, this is just something to learn. Uh, we have a guide on it on the on the website um, that talks about how to use ProGit to help you do this. It involves promotion. It involves you know some of the human policies that you can uh, create. It is like a conversation in and of itself. Here's what I've seen people say. They're like, look, uh, for us to turn on. Uh, human verification of all packages. These developers are using hundreds of packages. Uh, how the heck do we do that? And I mean, the answer is one by one. But eventually, eventually, once you create this long list of approved packages and then a system to update that list, you know, it's not going to be that bad. The, you know, you have, you don't need all million or 100,000 packages on NuGet.org. Probably only need 100 of them, hmm. maybe 1,000 of them. And your developers most certainly don't need the latest version of whatever JSON parsing or uh, or what he had a markdown parsing or whatever the heck library they need. They don't need. They probably don't need the latest version. If they do, they can submit a request and follow that internal process that you develop. So really, the best practices is to you know establish an internal process.